Hello, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a very, very interesting show today. You know, when we talk about the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series, we talk to so many people who are really worldwide leading technologists, worldwide leading entrepreneurs and founders and CEOs of their respective spaces and fields. And one area that really leads the way in technology is the aerospace industry. So we wanted to bring a worldwide leading expert in the aerospace industry on the show. So of course, I went through my Rolodex and I've been able to book a real leader in the field. His name is Mr. Robert R. Wilson. And Robert is the founder and chief executive officer of R2C Inc. And let me tell you, he is a preferred vendor for the aerospace industry in so many different areas, design and development, engineering, integration, manufacturing. I mean, you name it, the list goes on and on. And if I started talking about all the awards that Robert has won and all the awards that uh, R2C Inc. have received, I'd be on the show for 30 minutes just talking about the award. So, Robert, thanks so much for coming on the show today. It's really a pleasure, Andy. Great to be with you today. Robert, this is great to have you on the show. We always love bringing worldwide leading experts in their respective fields on the show. I have so many questions. I want to get right into it. But before we get started, let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet, Robert, and tell us about R2C Incorporated. Well, R2C Inc. is, uh, is the corporate structure for three wholly owned subsidiaries underneath it. So we have R2C Support Services, which is uh, an FCA style company that does aircraft maintenance uh, and modifications and things of that nature to support the U.S. military and the warfighters. And we have um, R2C Technical Solutions. R2C Technical Solutions primarily handles and addresses the, the, the high-end engineering and technical needs that, that you have in program offices that, that look at acquisition and things of that nature. And then R2C Aerospace is our manufacturing and high-end engineering logistics company. And that we do some really cool things like UAV development and design and um, some other really neat stuff. Robert, it's incredible what you do. You're headquartered in Huntsville, Alabama, and you really provide strategic leadership and oversight for all aspects of the business. So let's let's get into it a little bit because we have people watching the show. They're very interested in, you know, what entrepreneurs are doing, very fascinated with the, you know, with the aer aerospace industry. I mean, I'm personally just fascinated with it. How did you get started with this R2C Inc? Because you've become a leader, you're a go-to company. How did this all start for you? Well, you know, I started out in, in the military, so I have a military background with, within the aerospace industry. Um, and then coming from there, we, uh, I left Switzerland with my wife where we worked for uh, Swiss Air and for Lufthansa Systems. Uh, and then was able to, to come to America and, and work for several, several companies for about the first 10 years or so. And then we had an opportunity that presented itself. And we, uh, we, we stepped out of, um, out, of, out of a large uh, corporation and uh, started a small business to, uh, to really help address some of, the, some of the needs and give our government customer a little bit more flexibility. I like it, Robert. It's such a fast-paced and rapid environment that you're in. You know, there's people that are from the private sector, of course, that watch the show, people that do business in the nonprofit sector, and people that obviously do business with the government. But for the people that are doing business in the for-profit sector, let's just say, who haven't done business with the government before, maybe you could share with our audience what it's like doing business with the government agencies, maybe as um, as opposed to doing business in the private sector. Is there a difference from your perspective? Well, you know, I don't think there's that much of a difference, to be honest with you, Andy. I mean, you know, whether whether you're selling um, lemonade or nuclear weapons, it's it's still pretty much the same, right? I mean, 
it's based upon relationships, follow through, making sure that uh, you're doing the things that you need to be doing in order to take care of your customers. And in the end, we've been incredibly blessed. So, um, you know, we're, we're really and truly blessed beyond about every measure you could imagine. Uh, just being in, in America, in this country, and, and having the opportunities that we do, um, a lot of times we take those for granted, but you know, we, we, we have so much upside to, to really look at and achieve our potential. So um, in, incredibly happy. But business, in my opinion, is business, and it's all based upon relationships and how you follow through. I love it, Robert. Of course, I would be remiss to not thank you for your service to the country. We really appreciate uh, what you've done throughout the years. And when you, when you came out of the military, what was it like to transition into sort of being an entrepreneur and building this company? What did you take from what you learned in the military and brought it over with you to the private sector? So, you know, the, the, the military is always great in, in instilling discipline, ensuring, you know, the, the really truly the basics, you know, get up, suit up, show up, follow through, uh, and, and, and really and truly making sure that it's done right the first time uh, and, and seen all the way through to the end. Those are, those are the keys. Um, again, relatively simple and straightforward. If, if you continue to do those things, people will continue to, to ask you to, to do more. So. I love it, Robert. It makes all the sense in the world. And now, you know, when, when lay people and laymen, you know, who are not involved with the, with the military, not involved with the aerospace industry, with the government, integrating the military aspects. We've recently heard about the Space Force. So how does the Space Force sort of come in into the, into the program with regard to the aerospace industry or is the space industry a totally different space than the aerospace industry? Well, it's not really different, certainly not, not in Huntsville, Alabama. So Huntsville, Alabama has, uh, has been at the forefront of the, of, of the space industry since inception. So it's always been ingrained here, uh, and, and it's very, very common. We leverage a whole lot of uh, a, a whole lot of those people and those products uh, throughout the throughout the military and throughout industry as well. So while while Space Force is effectively separating uh, some of some of those items and elements into uh, into a sixth component, if you will. Um, the the basis the the basis and the groundwork for it has has really and truly been laid for for decades, uh, and and there's similarities in this as well if you look back at history. So you know before the U.S. Air Force was the Air Force, it was the United States Army Air Corps, uh, which my father was a member of. So you know f going from World War II where you had the Army Air Corps and you had you had pilots that were all flying in the Army. Uh, then once it was once it was done, you already had the basis that was there. So when the Air Force stood up, you moved to those assets and those elements and those resources over, and, and that became its own component. And I think we're seeing the same thing here as well. That's very interesting. You know, Robert, uh, some people may not know that you're really an internationally recognized logistics expert. And and what what how do you look at logistics in terms of sort of what you do for your clients, which is, you know, primarily the government and how does your background in logistics help you get from point A to B with your clients to, to fulfill the mission? So, so, so there, there's many of us kind of in my group that would argue that everything is logistics, right? Yeah. Um, which uh, there, there's a lot of truth to it, but the areas that, that we've really focused upon has been, um, um, design, designing for, for logistical needs, looking at reliability, availability, maintainability, sustainability. Those, those have been really and truly the key aspects for us because truly speaking, you can, you, can, you can create the best things in the world, but if you can't sustain them, you can't ensure that they're, they're able to be maintained throughout its life cycle, it's all for naught. Yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. So logistics are important. Of course, leadership and motivation is very important. And, you know, you are a big believer 
in putting together an award-winning corporate culture. I'd like to talk a little bit about your staff because, you know, your company is known for providing incredible, you know, service to your clients, to, to your biggest client, obviously, and your staff, they just have a passion to be the best that they possibly can. So when you look for someone to join your team at R2C, uh, tell us what you're looking for primarily in either their background, their experience, their passion, or the way they think. Well, it really depends upon what um, it depends upon what position that we're looking for. But having said that, I mean, from an experience perspective and from an experience level, and what we're what what our needs are there. But really and truly, what we're looking for is someone that can come in and be part of the team, uh, and that's going to to meld together. Because, you know, honestly, you can be a phenomenal leader, but if you're not surrounded by good people, you, you won't be there very long. Uh, and, and that really is the truth. So, again, I, I know I say this over and over and over again, but incredibly blessed. I have phenomenal professionals uh, that are around me that, that really and truly make uh, my life uh, significantly easier than, than what it was in the beginning when I was wearing every hat in the company. Um, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's much nicer at this point to, to have somebody that, that truly has the, the experience and the skill set to take care of and address those items and elements. Um, but, but really what we're looking for is we're, we're looking for that person to be a fit within the team. Uh, and we go through a very, very extensive uh, process in, in order to, to find and figure those out. Uh, so it's not just it will not just be me that speaks to them, but it will be everyone typically in my team that's going to touch them as far as the functional areas as well to ensure that we do come with a with a good fit. Corporate culture is huge, uh, and that goes all the way through from from the top to the bottom. Yeah, I like it, and it just it just resonates with me and is going to resonate with the people watching the show, whether they're a younger entrepreneur with a startup or a seasoned entrepreneur, a fortune 100 CEO, it makes all the sense in the world. And what you're doing really is remarkable. You know, when we think about questions, I know that you're a person that believes in asking the right questions so that you can find the answers out to help your clients and help the people who you serve. So, you know, so many people reach out to worldwide leaders. So many people reach out to, you know, best in class leaders to ask questions of them. And one of the big questions is we have a giant problem. How can we solve this? So in your space and, you know, in your business, you probably hear that a lot. I don't even know if, you know, you, you can share the big the types of big problems that your clients come to you with, because maybe it's classified, but, you know, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with solving problems for your clients? Well, what I find is I find that a, a, a lot of the problems or a lot of the roadblocks, if you will, um, our clients and our people, if you put the right people around the table, we can, we can typically come to come to a solution and, and, and come to a solution set is, is I guess what I should say. Um, you know, we just went through a huge pandemic and in, in that we, we saw some amazing things happen, um, between the, the federal government and, and industry. So when industry and the federal government come together and they truly come around the table, honestly, and say, Hey, here are here are the challenges we're facing. There are very few things that we cannot overcome. And you look back through the history of our country, you look back through, through the, the history of, of you know, the, the last 240 year experiment that we've, that, that we've been on here. And, and our, people, our people thrive in those areas where yes, there's a challenge, but, but they're able to think and they're able to think outside of the box. So I believe that when you bring your, your industry experts, you, you, you put them at the same table as you put the, your, your government folks and so on, uh, or your, in, in this case, your, your customer, your client. And, and what you'll find is by identifying those challenges and, and, and walking through the different courses of action, uh, that, that you really and truly can find something that's, that's quite workable, and you can typically do it 
much, much sooner than what you would ever really and truly imagine. Um, you know, be positive, carry on, and, you know, somehow or the other, divinity always seems to intercede and help us out. Yeah, that's that's great. And obviously, you know, being a veteran of Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and Operation Southern Watch, where you served as an air traffic control liaison for the U.S. Army aviation assets in Kuwait, you know, we think about the types of of people that you speak with, the types of people that people within your organization speak with. And it would seem to me that you sort of speak the same language, you know, from your background and experience. Do you find that being to be helpful in your business acumen with the people you work with? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I, I, I do that. I do find that to be, uh, to be advantageous. Um, you know, the Department of Defense is, is, uh, it is accused of having its own language all the way through. And really and truly, you know, when you when you first start out in acquisition, they hand you a book and they say, here, take this book home and remember all of these acronyms. Uh, and, and then just just to make sure that everyone stays on their toes, uh, they change them up every now and then. So, <laughs> yeah, it's um, uh, it, it's there is a common language that is there and, and you, you have to speak that all the way through. But at the same point. You know, I, I can't emphasize this enough. It still comes down to it still comes down to relationships. Uh, it still comes down to treating people right, treating people the way that you would want to be treated, and and following through on on what the issues and the problems are, and making sure that things are taken care of. And uh, again, I know I have a tendency to oversimplify these things, but uh, I don't know that you really can. See, I like that because you know it's you're in a space, the aerospace industry, that people think is a very complex industry and it is but the beauty about what you're able to do with your company at r2c is you're able to sort of simplify the complex and and if you need to simplify it in a way that's meaningful and easy to understand by someone on the other end of the phone or at the other end of the zoom call or the conversation you're able to do so so you're almost like a, a chameleon that can get complex or get simple depending on who you're talking to and of course your team has been trained to do that as well and i love that so much Let's talk about what you do in the community, because I know that one of your values and one of your missions at the company, Robert, is to really get yourself ingrained in the community, be part of the broader community, if you will, that you serve. So how important has that been for you and your company at R2C to be involved in the community? Oh, you know, that's been massive. It really has. Uh, we we have so many charities that, that that we try to reach out and touch and support, uh, and all of them all of them have have great missions and 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 really produce some phenomenal results. Um, I I think it is again I, I I know this goes back to 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 the same things over and over again, but. With, with the blessings that we receive, I think it's incumbent upon ourselves to, to pay that back and, and pay into the, the community in which we live. That helps build not only, not only the soundness of, of our community today, but also for the future, for our children, for our children's children, and so on. I mean, these are, these are huge things that we really and truly need to, to always be cognizant of uh, as, as, we, as we go about you know, building our businesses and building, building really and truly building the community as we go. Uh, so we're able to do a lot of uh, this, the, some some STEM programs and, and bring in some of the some of the younger groups from high school as well as some of the some of the universities that are around. Uh, and and we're able to uh, also reach out into some of the other charities. You know, one of the charities um, one of the charities that we supported here recently just sent. Um, just sent two kids uh, to the Junior Olympics, which was a, a phenomenal feat. So uh, really great stuff. Robert, that is so inspirational. And I love the way that you're able to pay it forward and, and really be part of what's going on to improve other people's lives. Uh, and again, you mentioned the blessings that you have and you're spreading those those blessings in a, in a wonderful way to bring a lot of light into the world. I know you've only cut out a certain amount of time for me today, Robert, and I really appreciate it because I've been waiting to get you on the show. And I wanted to take the remaining part of our time today and talk about entrepreneurship because, you know, there's there's oftentimes great 
advice that we can learn from successful entrepreneurs and especially for the younger entrepreneurs watching the show? Maybe they have a startup, maybe they're a, you know, bootstrap, maybe they've got a series A round of funding going on, they're starting to build their company, you know, maybe they have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 employees. And, and some of these founders and CEOs, when they hit a route roadblock, sometimes they say to themselves, especially if they're younger or haven't been around the block, you know, 15 times, maybe like you and I have been, is that they kind of freak out a little bit. Maybe they, they don't know what to do. Maybe they, they, they get a little paralyzed in the freeze frame because they haven't hit, you know, a roadblock before in their entrepreneurial career or in their business. And maybe you could give some entrepreneurial advice to the younger viewers of the show that maybe are hitting a roadblock and they don't quite know how to get through that roadblock, what you can tell them from a motivational standpoint to keep going and keep going and get through because there's going to be something on the other end that's going to be great for them. Well, you know, always the overused mantra of keep calm and carry on, right? Uh, but at the same point, um, let's let's go all the way back to the beginning of that, you know, from, from the entrepreneurial journey and and when you get into it and how you get into it and, and how you begin. So, so from, from the pre-startup perspective, uh, I, I think what you have to do is, is being an entrepreneur is a mindset. Uh, and and it's, it's, about, it's about working, it's about serving, and it's about service. So make sure that you're willing to, to work those 70, 80 hours a week to, to put in the time and do the things that you need to do in, in, in order to get going. You know, I would I would also point out that you don't have to be an entrepreneur. You can also be an entrepreneur. So those exact same things that, that, that we're sitting here talking about that are very entrepreneurial, you can do inside of a inside of a larger company as well. Um, I would highly recommend this because it, it's always it's always better to make mistakes with someone else's money. Um, you know, but but the best lessons that you ever learn will, will be the ones that, that have you either bleeding or losing money. I mean, that's just that's just the truth of the matter. And those will be the ones that stick with you, I promise you. Um, so again, to overuse that that phrase, you know, keep calm and carry on, there there really there really are times where you where you've got to learn to go slow in order to go fast. Um, and it's it's huge. So Stay motivated, uh, do everything you can to, to, to keep your motivation high, because what you believe will happen. Uh, it's just a question of when, and you have to have to keep your spirits high and, and your motivation high, because everything you do is, is being watched by everyone in your company. So when, when, when you start to think about how you're going to react, what you're going to do, and what you're going to say, and how you're going to say it. Just understand that your your team that is around you is watching that as well. They soak it up just like a child soaks up from their parents. Um, your your younger people are soaking this up from you as well. So be positive, keep calm, carry on, and go from there. That's great, Robert. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, rewind what Robert R. Wilson just said. That really is really the key. You know, keep calm and carry on. I love that so much. I'm going to start using that probably every single day. And and uh, I'm going to have to steal that one from you because I haven't heard that in a while, but it just resonates for me. You know, Robert, this is such a fascin fascinating show for me. And I want to, of course, give a shout out to all the veterans watching the show today. And maybe we could talk a little bit to the entrepreneurs watching the show who maybe haven't really thought about hiring veterans or maybe really aren't really understanding how important veterans could possibly be to their, to their business. Maybe you could share a little bit about the type of personality and background and experience that these veterans could bring to any company seeking to bring high higher you know quality people to their fold sure so so you know the first thing that you get with with someone who is who is a veteran is someone who's been through adversity so it starts out from day one in your training uh going through the military so you consistently have you know, those first few weeks have people yelling, screaming, and, and so on in your face all the time. And it teaches you to overcome those things. 
uh, and, and to move forward and move forward in a positive way. As you grow throughout your military career, you gain responsibility, you gain experience, you gain experience in leading, in leading teams and, and leading small teams and ultimately into leading much larger teams as well. Um, you, you look at how, how they solve, solve things and there's a constant, there, there's a constant leadership trait that is, that is consistently instilled at all levels of the U.S. military. So when you're bringing that veteran in, uh, if you can lay out the parameters for them and show them what they need to do, what they need to learn, and so on, uh, they are typically very focused on and uh, project-oriented, if you will. So they're, it's, it's oftentimes a very easy transition to move someone from, from the military setting into a, a project specific type of, of, of job and position. But, you know, you, again, the biggest things that, that you're always gonna look for from any employee at any point in time, get up, suit up, show up. And when they get there, you know, do what they need to do in order to execute. And, and the entire military tradition is really and truly wrapped up in that. Wow. I love it. I love it. You know, you've given me another wonderful thing that I'm going to start saying every day, get up, suit up, show up and keep calm and carry on. I mean, that should be the name of your book or your next book. Listen, R2C is really a compliant, very compliant and very reliable, you know, preferred vendor for the aerospace industry. And, and obviously you and your team are leaders. Actually, from my perspective, it, it's really great for me to know that, you know, the government and the Department of Defense and the aerospace industry has companies like yours to lean on to help them in so many different areas that you're able to to support. It's really, really remarkable. And I know, Robert, it's people like you and the people on your team that really keep the engines going, really keep the the, the oil lubricating the machine and making sure that it is the most efficient machine in the world today. And and this has been very, very Awesome and a real honor, Robert, to have you on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I think I'm going to rewind it again. And, and again, I'm going to keep saying it over and over because I love it. Keep calm and carry on in this newest one. Get up, suit up, and show up. I love it. Robert, this has been great. And I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. And it's really a blessing. Again, thank you very much. Um, love what you do. And uh, we'll, we'll keep it up.